If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire to have done. This picture depicts this. See this picture? If you look at it carefully, you have the world. Look how distracting. It reminds me of Times Square. Anybody here ever been to Times Square? Times Square is a very popular place, isn't it? Very distracting place. I think the amount of electricity they use there could probably power a whole city. Or maybe a poor country. And you see all these arrows. The wrong way. Notice how right there, you see that little cross, the white square? There's a church on the way. To remind you to be careful. See that? And you have all these buildings, the skyscrapers, and Plasville Marie, and uh, what's it called? 1,000 La Cochetier, and I don't know what towers, and party places, and all kinds of stuff. A lot of distraction. A lot of distraction. And it makes us very possibly swerve off completely. Notice how, see the, the gap between those arrows and the cross? It's huge. But it doesn't take much. I could just swerve off by a few degrees to the left or the right, and I'll be off the way. That's why we need daily reflection. We need to review ourselves constantly. Lord, am I on the way? If I am, thank you. If I'm not, bring me back. Tomorrow, Lord, I, will, I think I was on the way yesterday. Am I on the way today? Maybe I got on the way for a few minutes. A few minutes could cost me my life, right? When, you're, when you plug into your GPS, your address, and you take the wrong detour, and it says all of a sudden you were arriving at 5 o'clock, all of a sudden you're arriving at 5.27. You just lost 27 minutes because of that one error on the way. Same thing. That's why constant review. I have to keep my eyes on that GPS. God, my God positioning system. Keep my eyes on Him and ask Him all the time, Lord, am I on the way? Did I swerve off today? If I did, please help me bring me back on course. You know what, Lord, even better, let me remove the steering wheel from in front of me completely because I don't know how to drive without you. You take it, so you drive. And then with time, as I learn to have faith and trust in God, I thought, you know what, take the gas pedal, take the brake pedal, and if it's a five-speed manual, take the clutch, and you do all the shifting and all the braking and all the gas pressing because you know better than me. So, you can see this huge gap between earth and heaven. By God's grace, this is the closest we will ever get to hell. By God's grace, we pray, each one of us, this will be the closest we'll ever be to hell. This is what we want. We want to be heaven bound. St. Paul says our citizenship is in heaven. We're not citizens of Canada or the U.S. or Mexico. We're citizens of heaven. That is our eternal habitation. Why am I fretting so much over a temporary citizenship? A temporary visa. This is a temporary visa. So, as you know, people walking across that cross, you can see the nails are there as a reminder of what Jesus suffered for us. And you can see very carefully that this means that you will have to carry a cross. The cross looks very boring, right? It's just a piece of wood with two nails. And just a few people on it. Hey, notice not that many people. This looks much more exciting. Much more busy. Colors and neons and purple and blue and green and yellow. More interesting, more lively. But it doesn't satisfy. Because this place over here is only a depiction, but is beyond what we can imagine again. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to get to. So if you follow the cross, follow the way, follow Jesus, you walk with Him because He's the way, the truth, and the life, and you will never fall into that very scary pit below. Don't let this deceive you. This is temporary. None of this will exist in heaven. None of it. None of it. St. Peter says in the second epistle, the elements will melt with fervent heat. It will all melt away. All of it is going to be gone. So beware, be careful, and have faith. And so many people are so close as we conclude today. So many people are so close. 
You read John 12, it says, Nevertheless, even among the rulers of the Jews of the time, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They were ready to give up God. Oh, they were, they were believing him, but they couldn't give up whatever else on earth could come from men or positions or status because they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They were close. They had the faith, but they didn't have the rest. I'll leave you with a couple of verses from Revelation chapter 21. Notice these verses. And he said to me, the Lord said to St. John, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely. Freely. Like he gave to the Samaritan woman a few weeks ago. To him who thirsts. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. If you overcome, shall inherit all things. You'll inherit all of heaven. Because you inherit Christ. I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of bridge with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, which is eternal death. Notice how he says all liars. Some people think, oh, it's just a white lie. Jesus is the truth. Therefore, a lie is not of the truth. Therefore, a lie is not of Jesus. Therefore, if I'm any practicing any lie, I'm breaking myself away from Jesus. We need to be cautious with this. And then again in Revelation 22, the last chapter of the whole Bible. Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, to Jesus, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And again He says, and whoever loves and practices a lie. We need to ask, am I living a lie? Am I two-faced? Am I a hypocrite? Do I have more than one identity? Am I one thing at church and another thing at work? Am I one thing at church and another thing at home? Am I one thing in front of others and another thing with my wife and children? Am I one thing in public and another thing completely in private? Do I profess to have certain values and morals and beliefs and principles, but then I have something completely different where nobody notices and nobody's there? That's loving and practicing a lie. And the scary thing about this is if I live this long enough, I can start believing it. I can start believing, yes, I am. I am very true and whatever it is. Because I've lived a lie and practiced it and loved it. I've been, I practiced it because I had to, then I loved it because of what it gave me and got me, and then that was it. I actually believed my own lie. We can trick others. We can deceive anyone. We can put a facade, a mask, no problem. We can hide everything from everyone except God. I can live a hundred years on this earth, on this earth loving and practicing a lie and having an image on the outside and another on the inside that only he knows and start to believe it and think, yes, I am what people think I am and end up being told, I never knew you at the end. Because you never loved and practiced the truth. You loved and practiced the lie. See how liars are lying, as we saw in these two verses, is associated with murder, idolatry, immoral sexuality, Sorcery, dogs. Dogs here refers to lack of faith, unbelief. Those who do not believe in Jesus, in that sense. So St. Paul leaves us with encouragement and tells us, Therefore, brethren, we read this today, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way. Instead of loving and practicing the lie, live a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, which is Jesus, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. A new and living way, full assurance of faith, with a true heart. So if we have a true heart, 
will be able to walk that new and living way. We'll be able to say, I know the truth. I know the way, I know the truth, I know the life, because that is Jesus. I know Jesus. Not because I knew him on my own, but because of his love, he granted me to know him. So daily reflection, daily focus on my eternal life, realizing what Jesus has gone to prepare for us. What I has not seen, ear, heard, or entered the heart of man, I'll be able to walk this way till he receives me to himself one day. May God grant us all that true living and shared inheritance in the kingdom of God. And to be resistant and resilient in the last breath. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.